Okay, he's going to start the meeting. Hopefully, John will figure it out. John McKitty, can you hear me? I can't hear you, but Cody said, maybe leave the meeting and try and come back in. And if that doesn't work, maybe restart your computer. <laughs> I'm not good at reading maps. <laughs> Okay. So without the chairman, who takes over? Who else is here? Who else is? Who Can you see? Uh, hi, Chris. Hey there. Uh, Joe Spade is here. Hi, Joe. So we have three. Everybody can see in here, right? I can see you. I just can't see Chris and um, Joe, but that's okay. As long as I can hear them. I think when he starts the meeting, maybe. Okay. I've not done this either, really, so. Oh, it's, a, it's a newbie for everybody. Karen, can you see everybody? Can, I can. Well, I, I show nine participants. I can see seven. Ed is just blank. Nick doesn't have his, uh, he has no camera. I see uh, Mr. Hunnett. I see yourself, Terry. I believe it's the Koskis I see and Cheryl. Those are the ones I see. And Hi there. Cheryl. My camera on. I'm not Cheryl, I'm Lori. I'm sorry. Gloria. Oh, there's your camera. Hi, Nick at Ducharme. Hey, how's it going? Very well. So are we on, Cody? Okay. Meeting is on. Let's see if I do that. One, two, three. Okay. Okay, well, I'm not the chairman. <laughs> uh, so a call to order, I guess, is in order. I'll kick this off and make a motion to approve the minutes of the March 12th meeting. Excellent. Did you want to take a roll call? Oh, I thought you kind of done that. Sure, go for it. <clears throat> Are you want me to do the roll call? I can do it. So we have uh, Lisa Avedesian. Yeah. Uh, Joseph Spada. Yes. Chris Anderson. Here. John McVitie. Karen Martini, here. Okay, make your motion. So I'll make a motion to approve the minutes in the March 12th meeting. I'll second them. Anyone dissent? Nope. I'd say it carries. We have no old business. Everything from last year has been taken care of. Mm -hmm. Our new business, our first applicant is Brian Harnett, 216 Hopkins Hill Road. Mm -hmm. 
I'm sorry, Hartnett. And I miss, misspelled it on there. Hey, Mr. Hartnett, how are you? Very good. Okay. Nice to see you. Christmas, and we don't get to say it later. <laughs> Did you see? Yes, Merry Christmas. Do you want to begin? Uh, yes. Uh, first thing I'd like to state, uh, under chapter 44, 5-12, I'll just read the first sentence. All real property subject to taxation shall be assessed as full and fair cash value or a uniform percentage of its value. Mm -hmm. Okay. And basically, I recently purchased the house. And it was approximately 210000 not exactly. Um, the, the original, the taxes when I purchased were $777 a quarter. Now they're nine twenty one, dollars increased about 18.5%. And, uh, and uh, uh, the, uh, we had a revaluation. And usually would, uh, this was not a full scale revaluation where they walked into homes and pulled out the calculators and all that. And basically, they have a program. The uh, assessing company has a program. And they take the information, um, number of rooms, how big the house is, and they feed it into the program. And if nothing else, it does do a fair job whereby it doesn't overvaluate one person at the expense of another. If it's followed the way I just described. Um, as I stated before, uh, I looked at the property cards of the surrounding houses. Each house, um, which I could go right down the list here, is bigger. Uh, houses have uh, addition to them. Houses have a a metal flower room, uh, one's brick, uh, one has a huge deck, one has a, the one the addition has a uh, uh, new driveway, new retaining wall, better siding than my house. Uh, practically most of the houses have better siding, but mine's not bad. Uh, my, my house is a livable house. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, and so I looked at the property cards. Uh, 194 uh, Hopkins Hill has 988 square feet. That's a big deck. 204 has uh, 1,084 uh, square feet. 120 foot modern follower room. Uh, 222 uh, has the same layout as my property, except it has an addition. And that's one with a new uh, driveway and a new wall. 210 has uh, the same size as my house. Um, and that one um, has a unique situation uh, that I uh, have too, where it was recently purchased. And it was assessed at exactly, well, not exactly, depending, $15,000 below the sale price, as was which mine. Excuse me, which number was this, please? 210. 210. Yeah. And uh, it looks like the depreciation code was probably changed, but I can't prove that. But I know it was changed on mine. And 224 has 980 uh, square feet, has a mudroom, has attached garage. And um, that is the only house I think is um, higher, uh, higher price, maybe by a thousand um, over what my house was assessed for. Um, I looked at the prior property card, and my house was assessed at 139.8, um, and it had a depreciation code of 20, uh, not 24, uh, 40. That's on the prior card. So when you purchased the property yeah. in December of 2019, Right. It had an assessed value of 139.8. Right. And you paid what for it? 210. I'm Pro sorry? Approximately 210. 
210. And we have it at what? 194.4, exactly $15,000 lower, which you did to the house on 210. 210 uh, I, I think that's coincidental, but okay. I just wanted to get that little bit of background. Can I sure. ask a question? Um, Carrie, those yeah. comps that Mr. Hunnett just presented to us, were any of those recent solds, like his own property? Because that will that does play into the calculation of the uh, assessment. The most recent was right. He didn't correct. Um, no, one ninety-five. What? Two years ago. Yeah. So uh, those two times was sold two years ago. But why um, the sale of the property, if you will, would affect? The comps when they come up with the calculation. To That's work. where they get them from. Right. So, so the computer programs is affected by the sales. So the total town is affected. Correct. Okay. Now you have this program that, for instance, if it has an extra bedroom, it might add fifteen grand to the house value, or is it bigger <laughs> than my house? The program does certain things based on certain criteria. Okay. And one of the criteria would be the depreciation factor, okay? And uh, all these houses are similar shape. Some are bigger, some are smaller. Um, right, we ha yours is, has, is in a good condition mm -hmm. from having been built in 1954. So you get 24% depreciation. Uh, no, uh, no uh, it was a 40. I'm sorry? It was uh, 40, yes. Okay, but it's been updated, sir, right? Okay, my question on the update is this. I'm looking at the property card. It says visit history. Nobody showed up here. I know, but I have the pictures from realtor.com. Can I ask a question? Sure. Yeah. When was the kitchen updated? I don't know because I wasn't here. Was there a permit pulled on it? Exactly. That's my next question. There was no permits according to the property card. Now, uh, um, basically, uh, it seems like it was intentionally valued at $15,000 under. In other words, they made up their mind what the value was going to be. My house, I'm just saying my house right now, is not the nicest house of these houses. There's an addition on the house next door. Okay? It has better siding than this house. Okay? Um, there's a garage on the one next to it with a mudroom. It has better siding than this house. Okay. This, in other words, in order, if they would have just, if this house was not sold, the value of this house would be much lower in relation to these other properties. But the, but the problem is the house was sold. So this house was on the market. The market got to evaluate it. And the market said it's worth 210. Okay, so if this you, house is worth 210, correct? Because you're willing to pay that. The market, that's what you're willing to right, pay. That. Actually, Can I ask another question? Do you have a mortgage on the property? Yes. And I don't want to get too personal because anywhere near the purchase price is a very small mortgage. Um, I had uh, 185. And the reason I ask is because aside from the fact that the market looked at this and said, this is the value of the property. In order for, to get the mortgage, the bank would have sent out an appraiser who would have done a comps appraisal mm -hmm. and they wouldn't have granted the mortgage unless they felt the house was worth more than the mortgage amount. I think that's on the wrong track here, okay? The question is well, not- I, I'm, I'm emphasizing the market value. Yeah, the question is not the house worth 2010 or not, right? That is not the question I have here. I have, a, uh, I have the abatement form here. In the abatement form, there are checkboxes. One checkbox is, is the appraisal value wrong? Okay, I didn't check that. Uh, let's see, uh, long story short, I checked the box that said, disproportionately assessed in an estate Assess in comparison with other properties. You have but that's, a comps, but that's getting at a comps appraisal. So when you look at the comp, well, there would be a comp appraisal. It would be in relation to other properties. 
does not say to other comp properties. But I'm it saying that's the thing. Other properties. If you look at 222, you have 210 with a sale price. You have 222, which is a better house without a sale price. 210 has been a value higher than 222. 222 has a, an addition. 222 has a brand new driveway, brand new retaining wall, brand new siding. Okay. Now, uh, Kristen just say, I said, I looked at the, I looked at the, uh, uh, what was that called? Uh, Zillow pictures. She did not look at Zillow pictures at 222 because there are none. Okay. Then uh, she did not compare the house. She's just looking at 210 or 260. I'm sorry. Um, and she's not comparing the houses to the other houses. Now, the purpose of evaluation is to uh, proportionately and fairly ass assess the town levy to all the property owners. And if, the pro if, if my property in relation to the entire town, say it's at 0.01%, but I think I think that's where the where the mistake in the analysis might be because I don't believe that's what it's it's saying. The idea is that if you set market value for everything, now you have appropriately valued the properties relative to all the other properties. It is not to say we're going to equalize the properties in a neighborhood. And the obvious reason for that is let's say you had the best house in the neighborhood. It's going to be disproportionately highly assessed because it's worth more. So it's not to set a, a, a consistent value across a neighborhood. It is to really assign market value. And that's our job. Our job really is to figure out what the heck is the market value. And, and to me, it's been determined multiple ways, either by the market or by your bank. You do not do your job because if I did not bought this property, correct, the building would be in the same shape it is now, right? And they would have just took the information, put it into that computer program, and came out with an assessed value totally different than what we have here. And it'd be lower than the house at 220, 222. It'd be lower than the house at, um, with the garage, and that's, uh, I agree with you. I absolutely agree with you that so, the sale prices are going to affect the values. So we're going to, we have a two tier system. If you don't buy a house and you own a house, you're going to, uh, this a set of appraisal company is going to come in, look at the property card, put a value in based on that computer program. Now, if you buy a house, you don't get treated that way. They come in and say, gee, um, the house went for 210. The program says 175. Um, we can't have that. So we have to find a way to make the computer program say 210 or 195 in this case. So in other words, you were telling people there is a dual assessment policy in this town. No, I'm not. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, I'm, I'm not. And I'll tell you why. Exactly the same way as 222. I'm looking at your numbers. If I just go from the lowest house to the highest house on your yeah. on your spreadsheet, there's a $19,000 difference from the lowest and the highest. What, no, 179 to, yeah, okay. Yeah, you want to give me 179? Correct. And we have a depreciation that says that your house is in a little bit better shape. And your, your speculation, Who made that determination? speculation is that someone fudged this number to change your valuation. Yes based upon a computer program that you make a lot of assumptions about what that computer program does and doesn't do. I don't know any of that. What doesn't it do I describe? I'm just saying in general, because I don't know exactly what you do. Uh, it does, yeah. you don't either. But it does treat anything fairly. If you have an extra bedroom, they throw in more money. They use the criteria, okay? And I asked um, Kristen, uh, what's the determination? What is a 24 versus a 40? What is the criteria? And I was told it was subjective, okay? Subjective means, well, you could, you could walk in the house and say it's a 35, and somebody else could say it's an 87, okay? I, I, don't, I don't know what you're talking. You said that, oh. I asked you what was the criteria between a 40? What, a 40, what's a 40? A uh, depreciation code. The depreciation rate. <laughs> right. And no, it's, it's, it, you get a percent a year. Depend in average condition. So you're in good condition, and it is. 
Well, actually, I think the cabinet scheme from uh, IKEA. I mean, it's not really high level. Uh, it is nice, and it's not high level. But the point being that uh, this was okay. But they're not 1954 cabinets. Is the house at 222 a, a 1954 cabinet? I I don't know. They didn't but, appeal to me. You did. Well, yes, but um, so you you uh, do you think any of these houses here? on this list has 1954 cabinets. Houses have been updated all the years, okay? No one's okay, gonna- Well, mine hasn't, and I've lived in it for 25 years, and it was built in 1880, so I'm just, I just use me. Well, I mean, most people have a 19, my house, when I grew up, it was 100 years old, we did change the cabinets. <clears throat> okay, I, I, I'm not gonna, I just wanna put it out there that these are 15 minute hearings. Okay. And we are at 15 minutes. Okay, I just want to state that the, the, uh, it seems to be a dual assessment code here. Uh, it was tweaked. We get it at one, uh, 195. Uh, the, the house at two, uh, 210 was tweaked. We get it exactly $15,000 lower than the other one. Uh, it seems that it was just a way to make th that computer program appear to be fair market value. Uh, it, if they were, uh, if this house was not sold, it would have been about one, one seventy, I would guess. Uh, so, uh, I think this is totally unfair. Uh, I've been a tax owner for thirty-five years, and we never predetermined the tax due uh, before uh, uh, before we uh, looked at the evidence. The house was never looked at. It was often to be looked at. It's in the law states in comparison to other properties. Mr. Hunnett, I have a question for you. Do you think that perhaps your property was grossly undervalued prior to the new assessment as I take a look at it? I want to know because I am a, I am a mass resident. I, had, I came in here into uh, Rhode Island. I got divorced. This house is the right price. I could not live in Massachusetts anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, uh, I, I understand that. I have a license. And I looked at the taxes. I said, the taxes and the price, I can swing it. Now I come in because it's, it's not fair that if this house would have been assessed at $170,000, I'm making the number up, but I think you would say it would probably be right, if I did not buy it. And because I buy it, bought it, it's now at uh, 195, and it's higher priced than a house with a brand new addition, a house with a garage, uh, a brick house with a flower, flower in the room, uh, every single one of these houses, I did not skip a house in between saying, well, that one doesn't support my cost. I went right up the street, okay? And this house was, I guess, at the lowest of the uh, group. And now it's the, uh, almost the highest by $1,000, okay? I, I talked to a professional appraiser and he basically said, what they did was this, when they ran this uh, house into their program, the value of the house came down nowhere near the sales price. And to make it uh, look like the rest of the houses were at fair market value, they jumped this one up by adjusting the depreciation code by not visiting the property. Okay. And by, um, there were, uh, evidently, I don't know how old those kitchen cabinets are. Could be 10 years old. Okay. I, uh, you know, it's going to best as tiles and uh, so. This thing's wrong in this house, okay? okay we're, we are over your time, sir. Okay. Is, is there any final things that you, you would want us to know? Um, uh, basically, uh, you know, as I said, I, I worked for the Bureau of Local Assessment uh, for Massachusetts for years. Uh, they had laws, they had appeal pro they had a law for everything. Um, and they had uh, specific, you, you had to have evidence to state that uh, that property code, not from 40 to 30 like you did to the house. I believe they also update according to sales every year, do they not? No. The OR? Oh, well, no, yeah, but they, they don't do it per house. They can't spot Acqu assess. According to sales, no, you cannot spot assess, you're right. House was spot assessed because it was sold for 210, so we gotta have, we gotta have it up to near 210. As opposed to using the program that every other, uh, every other house was used. This house should have been uh, assessed in the exact same manner that every single house 
in this town was successful. Why? They should be used the same tools, the same wrenches, the same screwdrivers, and that, that the house at 222 was done at, and the house at 210, and the house at 194. Okay, and it was basically saying, okay, we this house went for 210. Uh, right now, I, I, this house is high in 210, and what, uh, uh, because the, the sky, uh, the sales have skyrocketed right now. And, and in other words, to get me at 210, everybody else should be around 210. I should not be at 97% assessment uh, value and everybody else at 85. Okay. Okay. M Mr. McVitie, can we hear you? Oh, I can't hear you. Is he the okay. Okay. Uh, I don't know what to say. Okay. Well, I guess my time is up. Uh, yep, we will. Uh, does the board have anything else to say? No. Okay. Uh, can I ask one more question? I think I looked at the abatement form and it's basically, it says that if, if we have to go to the next step, it's uh, uh, a court I said Washington County, aren't we in Kent County? Yes. So uh, if, if this has to go to court. Kent County Superior. Okay. Is there a form that should be filed or I have to go to the court and uh, get more information? I don't think there's a form. I think you just filed a complaint. Yeah. File a suit. Okay. As I said, all my years of tax auditing was fair and balanced. Uh, even I didn't like the guy, I did not raise the tax. I did not predetermine the tax when I started the audit. I mean, um, in other words, if, uh, if, the, if you hit me a tax rate of 1850 and everybody else around here at 1650, I'm sure you would agree that'd be unfair. Essentially, you did the same thing, but in the reverse, you did with the assessment value. Okay. Um, discussion amongst the board? I, discussion amongst the board? I think he's, I, th I think he's assessed at where he should be. I think he was grossly underassessed years prior. I agree. I agree. Well, I agree the smallest too. house is more expensive than the biggest house. Okay. Um, and I don't understand, you know, I'm taking a look at to Chris's point of the, you know, $19,000 difference from highest to lowest. I don't, I, I'm confused at where the 170 asking appeal price came in. Well, first of all, the uh, two tenants at 179, right? He got the same deal. The one, he had a 195 sales price. They took off 15 grand. Except that was two years ago, and I don't, I don't want to engage in more discussions. We've, we're moving on, but that was a two-year-ago sale. The market's done nothing but gone up, so there's every reason to think that that house would sell for whatever. I don't know how that figures in here. Well, I just thought it was strange. The problem is your, your yes. bank even seemed to say 185 was a fair price, and they had to have had a comps appraisal for that. So I don't know how we get to 170. So, so you get to hang, okay. hang me at a higher price. Because Misunderstanding a here. Price. Excuse me, sir. This is the time for the board to discuss. Okay. I, I agree with Lisa that I believe that the valuation that's been in place now is is correct um, and and perhaps low. I'm not going to go there. Um, oh, okay. Any other discussion amongst the board? I actually have a question for you, Kerry. Do, do, does Mr. Hunnett fall into this the situation where he can have his taxes freeze moving forward? No, he's only been here a year. He's going to be five years. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Boy, am I glad it wasn't frozen at 138. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Will it even be official decision rendered? So I'll make a motion uh, to deny the application. So this is the official decision. Go down now. And I'll make a motion to second it, Chris. 
All in favor? Aye. 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 The three, the three eligible members to vote have voted to deny the appeal. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Harnett. Okay. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. All right. Next, we have Mrs. Koski. Joe, no, can you hear us? Yes. Hi, yes. Joe, can you hear us? Yeah. Okay. You've been very quiet. That's me. Okay, Mrs. Kosky. Did you want to speak? Can you hear us? Yes. Okay. Um, my mother received the letter from Gorman Gorham and um, that doesn't have anything to do with this. I know. I just, want, I, I just, I just would like to just, just say that one little thing, if you don't mind, please. Okay. Um, she paid. She Not paid have paid. Okay. All right. Um, well, anyway, she paid back the, the, uh, $30,000, which was a mistake because my father had dementia. And then we get the tax bill now. And it's basically, it's very close to being doubled of what it was before. And, um, it just seems very unfair. That's, that's why we uh, sent the letters in. What she's referring to is they had double exemptions here with the freeze and in Florida. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, they got caught and we had to have Gorham and Gorham send a letter to say okay. you can't do that. It's clear that you will have to pay that back. We can you hear me now? I'm sorry. Can you hear me? This is John McVitie. John, we can hear you. Can hear you, John. We can't see you, but that's okay. Well, I'm going to turn the video on right now. There I am. Oh, Excellent. Terrific. I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. My wife is using it today. She says it went out during the meeting, and I just found that out when it went out for me. So okay. Please keep welcome. Attention. Yeah. Thanks. Welcome. Okay, so that's the background on that. It has nothing to do with their valuation. Okay, so this is a payback because they would, they had, if I can understand this correctly, and correct me if I'm wrong, they were using both residences in different states as primaries to get an exemption? Yes. Understood. Okay. So the pay, how, how was the payback? Uh, agreed upon is it is, is it amortized are they is it x amount of dollars for x amount of years until the the, the difference is paid How, what, no, I, believe it's pay, I believe it's you pay it quickly it you was can paid. answer that better than me that's a tax collector thing but you went through it so it was paid back yeah it was paid back okay but we also could have put 12 percent interest on it and they and we did not oh okay well, we received the tax bill and it was, it's very, very close to being double. And it just seems very unfair. Double from when? Double from the prior amount. Hold on, let me get there. You have their field card, yes? Board? Have printed them it would have been easier okay so two house lot on allison avenue waterfront lot an acre and a half i'm sorry is it an acre and a half is that correct was it did i read that correctly 1.6 yes okay uh they had a 34% increase in the reval. With the town average being what, about 24? I haven't, I haven't uh, broken out what the average for lakefront has been. I believe that the single family was around 20, but we know that lakefront properties have been just, it's been insane. They've been like the, um, 
mobile homes. I think they've all been really undervalued. So other than the um, problem that the taxes have doubled, do you have an argument to make about the valuation of your house versus what the value of the town is assessing it at? Well, nothing, there's, there haven't been any additions or anything like that. I mean, you know, it looks like the, the, the same way as when it was built. They provided me nothing. I'm sorry, what was that? I'm sorry, but they, I was just looking in my file, even to the, to my, uh, the appeal to me that I denied. Oh, I, um, they I, provided I nothing. Letter. I just wanted to know if they had an argument that directly talked about the value of the, as, of the lot, because that's what we're talking about here, is that we're trying to come up with what the, what the, the value is, and then with the tax, department and the town council does with that is something else what they set the rate as something else mm -hmm. we're trying to figure out what the value of the property is um so i'm just and i know i did a little research to, to, to figure out some things um i didn't know if you had anything else to add about the, the what you believe the value of the property is today We don't really know because we, you know there's nothing to compare it to because it, you know it was built a very very long time ago in the 60s. Um, and was, like I said, there's been there's no additions or anything like that done to it. So when was the um, waterfront cabin done? Is that the pictures look beautiful of that? When was that built? The the they're both born uh, built in the 60s. And and neither has been updated recently. No. Yeah. Is either of these rented? No. I, is the either vacant? I'm sorry. And by the way, that that's in fair condition. That waterfront one. So they get they're getting fifty two percent. I'm sorry. I'm just curious. Is either house vacant? Well, my mother lives with me at one house, and the other house is is per se. Um, we use it in the summertime to go down there and sit on the porch, but it's vacant, yes, per se. So it could be rent. I'm just curious. You could rent that house if you want to. No. Why not? Um, people destroy things. We don't want it destroyed. No, but it could be, and that's true for any rental property, but you, it could be rented. Well, we go down there in the summertime. And, and uh, it, so you know. You used to have two houses that you, you have access to. Oh. Which is yeah. fine. I mean, it's your right. It's your property. Yeah. But they're both habitable, correct? Yes. Okay. And my eye just keeps going on this field card to the value of, of the land because you are waterfront and it's a commodity and they're not making more waterfront properties. Uh, lots that, uh, I mean, to, to find a waterfront property, an acre and a half waterfront property is, is a pretty... Mm -hmm. Christine, piece right now. To have two houses on it. I grant that it'd be limited to the size that you have now, but to have two properties, you, you have the, a saleable property that actually has an income producing potential along with owning it. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful property um, with an amazing little white front cabin. And I know what those go for in the rental market. I mean, there's a, there's a valuation point of view. Let me tell you, when I saw this and I read your letter, I approached this from what is the lowest possible number I could justify on this property? And then I saw the second house and said, holy cow. Um, I mean, it's, I don't know. I do, there was, I did pick up on something, the numbers that I have a question with that maybe Karen can explain. And unfortunately, I don't have my notes in front of me, but I, I the property, the building values came out around $108,000, I believe, which to me seems kind of low for two buildings. However, the real estate value seemed to jump disproportionately. Um, it went up something like 30%, 36%. Yeah, that's what we saw in the waterfront. No, I understand that. But I noticed the house, the, the, the building values didn't go up nearly the same percentage as the land. The land the only thing I could see was perhaps assigning more of, of a uh, the regular bump up. <clears throat> if the town property's went up 24%, maybe the land should have gone up 24%, not the 36%. I don't know. It wasn't going to change it much anyway. 
And that was just the thing that I noticed was there was a significant jump in the land value. Um, and I don't know if that was, was consistent across all waterfront property or not. I just didn't have that kind of information in front of me. From what I have seen, yes, it has been. Yeah, it was the land that jumped. Uh -huh. It was the land that jumped. And, and, and while I still think that the, the building values are low, I'm not going to push that. I, I would, maybe there's some room to move in the land value. I don't know. I, I it was a big hike. Um, it's a big parcel. I didn't hear what you said. It's a big parcel. That's a big parcel of land. Well, what's the and if somebody were to buy it, they're going to come in and knock those houses down and put up what they want. They got an acre and a half. They can but I can't do, I, I'll say you can't do that. You would be limited to the footprint of those two houses. And you'd have septic issues beyond galore. I mean, you'd have issues with that, which is why the 300 and whatever number that's on that 3.6 acre lot. You should be able to keep the same amount of bedrooms, no? Same bedrooms. Uh, right. But what kind of system you'd have to install is something else if you're going to rebuild them. Uh, I don't know what the cesspool situation, I don't want to know. Uh, if they're built in the sixes, probably cesspool three replaced. I don't know. I don't want to get into any of that. Uh -huh. uh, what is it? What's the land value? 360 something? No, 285. No. 285.5. No, the, 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 land, the land value alone now was how much? 285. 285.5. I don't have that page in front of me. 285. Oh, all right. Up from what? Up from? 194. Nine. Yeah, I mean, that, that was a that was a heck of an increase. Yeah. Was that and I'd leave this to the real estate agents. You know, would that lot go for two eighty five, a one point six acre lot? An acre and a half on uh, on the uh, lake. You, you then maybe somebody who's going to scoop that up to Carrie's point. I mean, the 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 recent solds of all those waterfront properties, all in and around Johnson's. Pond and wood estates and acres of pine. I mean, they're getting astronomical amounts of money, and they can also thank COVID for that too. Because everybody's what, 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 what kind of houses on them? Mm. I'm sorry. What kind of houses are on those astronomically high lots on sale prices right now? Because I don't oh. think you're going to find many like this. Right. This is small. If, if you chose to build one house there, even though you'd probably be able to get away with the same number of bedrooms. Um, you'd have some serious development costs to figure into to, to that lot price, or you're going to be stuck with two very small houses, which I don't know if someone's going to spend that kind of money unless it's an investment property. Um, I don't know. Well, at the end of the day, they're going to have to put two septic systems in. They would have to put one in, let's say, okay, Mr. and Mrs. You know, Smith coming by the property, okay, and they want to like do a family compound, they want to start doing renovations. I they'll have to do two sand filtration systems at the cost of 30 grand a piece all day long. Probably. All day long. So to your point, yes. And so now all of a sudden, you know, you're paying 280 for the lot, you're throwing 60 on for, for septics. Now, and now we're at 340 before we even start with the, with the water. Well, I'm just curious about that land. Value. That land number is high and that went up a lot. Mm -hmm. They all did. All waterfront did, from what I've seen. Let's see. That's a big parcel. Hey, Carrie? Yes. Uh, I didn't see uh, the, uh, your consideration letter for this uh, property. Did you didn't see, I'm sorry? I didn't see your consideration letter. Is my something wrong with my uh, sound? No, I can hear you. All right. So my, I didn't send you anything from my appeal. Okay, because I was just wondering what all of your thoughts were, like if, if anything had happened uh, before they... Uh, no, nope, it just said denied. Okay. I apologize. The, the old land valuation is what, 192 what? 194.9. 194, all right. I'm trying to...
it was a 46% increase on the land value if And I don't know where I'm getting the 24% from. I thought that was the average for us at the time. If you apply the 24% increase to the prop to the land and left the buildings alone, because I just think those are undervalued now, that would get you 241.8 on the land. Let me throw out a fact, Chris. There's a house on 36 acres of pine. I know it because it was one of my clients. They have an 11,000 square foot lot. It is, it, it's waterfront. Um, that land value is two and a quarter for 10,000 square feet. All right. Well, yeah. All right. And he, and they, and, and, you know, and they didn't jump considerably, but that's 10,000 square feet. And that whole, um, yeah, and that whole, that property value went up 25%, 24.3. Did you look at this on GIS, Chris, by any chance? Did I look at it on what? On the GIS. Uh, I Google Earth, I know where it is. Yeah, nice peninsula. Well, I, it's a nice peninsula. It's on, and no offense, people live on Johnson's Pond, but it's on the quiet end of Johnson's Pond because you're past the, the bridge where boats can't be zooming around. I'm sure there's some boats up there, but it's not. Uh, if you look at Johnson's Pond, I think that's a nice spot. To that point, the Reval Company did make different types of lakefront. So some, like you say, the quieter end might be a little bit more, have a little bit more of an increase than the noisier areas or Ohio Lake. And some, don't get me wrong, some love the noise. Some want to party and have their- Oh, yeah, party. yeah, not, I would. <laughs> you know, I like quiet, but. Okay, let's see. All right, we're going to push in 25 minutes on this one. Mm -hmm. Joe, and any thoughts? Okay, does anyone have any more questions for, for this? Joe, Lisa, Chris? No. Okay, then at this point we have enough information to uh, come to a decision. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I missed the first half of the meeting. I'll be deciding now on uh, each one of these uh, appeals. We just did on the last. Okay, so you already did the, uh, the decision for the last appeal. For, we did. On that. Okay, so we're going to make a decision right now uh, on this. Mm -hmm. Okay, does anyone uh, want to make any kind of a motion uh, or a price? Joe, can you hear us? Hear you fine. Okay. Okay. Any comments on this before we take a vote? No. Okay. I, I would make a motion to reduce the valuation by, and I have to take a little bit of a guess here, 25,000 simply to reflect what seems to be a, a disproportionate jump in this year's land value. I could be wrong about that. Maybe the average, I wish I knew what the average was for this type of property. 46% just seems very high in a one year jump in the land value to me. Mm -hmm. So you said you want to reduce it down to 373,000? Uh, I, I I apologize. The numbers in front of me. Yes, uh, I would subtract twenty five thousand from it. Um, okay, so three ninety eight minus twenty five is three seventy three. Okay. Yes, that would be my motion. Okay. I would second that motion. Okay, we have a motion. We have a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All against, same. Okay, looks like the passed. Okay, so reduce by how much, please? 25,000. Okay. And it was originally 398, 98,000. Now it is 373,000. You're talking just the land value. Correct. Because I, I really don't want to do overrides. So I will get as close to 25,000 as I can. 
I, I don't, I don't want to do overrides with, with values. So when you just throw out a number, it makes it difficult for me to, to properly adjust. Well, what would an adjustment be? I'm going to go in right, right. I, I will ask that in the future. What, what? I apologize if I made your life difficult on this one. I didn't. No, that's okay. I, I had mentioned it. So I'm going to try and have to adjust the land value. As close as I can get with what influences that I have. And I will get as close to 25,000 as I can. I won't go under. If I have to go over, I'll go a little over. Does that sound doable? To work with? I'm sorry. When will you know what the figure is? Tomorrow? Oh, yeah, before I have you sign, <laughs> sign the, the uh, appeal form. Okay. I mean, I could play with it now, well, but want, I'd like to actually have, to, have an actual yeah. reason to do it. So maybe I can look around very closely and find something. Yeah, that, that's good enough meeting to, to, uh, to, to end this session uh, with, with this appeal. Okay, so. So we'll go with what you just said, Kerry. Okay. Um. Motion carried, did it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mrs. Koski, I hope that makes your holidays a little better. Thank you. We really appreciate all your consideration and your kindness. Um, and Merry Christmas to all of you and a healthy and happy new year. And we hope that everyone gets a shot soon <laughs> so that everyone can be healthy again. Us Merry too, Christmas. and you stay that Thank way. Thank you, ladies. Thank you very, very much. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Take care. Merry Christmas. I don't know how to get out of this. Okay. New Snack Hill, that is going to be Nick. All right. Well, thanks a lot for your time, everyone. Um, does everyone have the kind of the analysis I put together in front of them? Does that I do. Okay, cool. Sounds good. Yeah, I'll just I'll just kind of summarize everything, um, kind of at a high level. Um, so this is I actually have a property after this one too, but yeah, we can definitely start with uh, twenty thirty New Snack Road. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, it's one parcel. It has two warehouses on it. Uh, the total square footage for the two warehouses is about forty nine thousand square feet. Um, they're pretty standard buildings. Um, I would say average to good condition. Uh, the 2020 assessment, uh, it's about 3,146,700. So just about $64 a square foot. And um, really my numbers um, really don't, there's not that much of a difference. My numbers come out to 2,850, so about $58 a square foot. So only about a $6 a square foot difference. Um, so how I looked at the property, I put together a sales comparison approach and an income approach. With the sales approach, um, I found four sales I thought were pretty pretty similar to the subject property, uh, two of which were in Coventry. Uh, the sales range from about $33 a square foot to $65 a square foot. Uh, so again, the high end being 65 bucks. Um, made uh, several adjustments to account for stuff like, you know, the date of the sale, age condition, uh, building, building heights, uh, amount of finished office space, stuff like that. After the adjustments, the sales came out to, they range from $24 a square foot to $71 a square foot. Average of 52, um, median of about 57. So um, my final value um, with the income approach came out to about $58 a square foot. Uh, so that's consistent with the, um, the requested market value. 
In addition, um, I put together an income analysis. Uh, since the property is owner occupied, I looked at current um, asking rents of industrial space um, to determine a likely, a likely market vent, uh, market rent. Uh, so a rent that the subject property would rent for if it wasn't owner occupied. And the rents that I found, they, they range from $6 a square feet to $7 a square foot. Um, I use a, um, a rent of $6.25 a square foot. Um, vacancy credit loss of 10%, owner's, uh, owner's expense of 12.5%, and that's based on a hypothetical triple net lease and a cap rate of 8.5%. So on the income approach, my numbers came out to $2,840,000. Um, so pretty close on the, both the sales and the income. Um, and yeah, but it's basically how I came out to my value about $58 a square foot. Again, really not too much of a difference from uh, the town's value, but I, th I did think there was a little room. You guys have any questions? I have a question, Nick. Yeah, sure. And I, and I, I, I just need to ask. I, yeah. So are you, um, accredited in Rhode Island are you um, could you fight this in court in Rhode Island are you asking if I'm a, a, a licensed appraiser in Rhode Island you right oh no I'm, I'm not okay. I I formally have an appraiser license in Connecticut and uh, Rhode Island though okay just wanted to know yep no problem and I understand a lot of this stuff you know it's very it's very subjective like cap rate market rent stuff like that mm -hmm. so you know Nick, are any of these other comps retail? So they're all industrial. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, there's no retail comps, anything like that. Mm -hmm. They have a, mm, I'm going to. They are. Um, foot on retail would be a whole lot higher. Yeah, retail definitely would be higher. Um, I do want to point out one comp that I thought was probably the best sale comp. It's uh, sale comp number three. 70 center of new england boulevard that's in coventry it's kind of, it's somewhat of a dated sale you know it's from 2015 we did just for that though um i just thought you know since it's within the town similar size 35,000 square feet uh newer building and that one sold for 44 dollars a square foot um so just kind of again comparing that one to this the subject property that one sold for 44 Subjects on it, uh, 64, I, you know, I did think there was a bit of a discrepancy there. Um, but we considered all the sales. So. Mm -hmm. Chris, Coventry Lumber is retail. I, I'm well aware that Coventry Lumber is retail. Yeah. Not all of it's retail. There's three buildings. No, there. no, 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 not all of it. But there, there's a retail component. Oh, no, no, I, I know. I'm, I'm agreeing with you. I, I, and also, you know, with the, I mean, I'm taking a look at location and the road traffic and exposure and, no, I, I see problems with these numbers. I think the, the retail space was a thing that jumped out at me. You've got two buildings, I think, over there that are purely storage. You've got, I don't know what it is, 50% of one of those buildings that's retail. Um, yeah, and I did, I did make, sorry to interrupt, I did make adjustments to account for the retail space or the, you know, finished space within the, within the properties in the sales grid. It's ridiculous. But not, where am I missing? On the income analysis, there's no adjustment for retail, is there? Well, it's 75% industrial space. And the comps, they all contain a certain percentage of finished area. <clears throat>
So you've got, yeah, you've got half the front building as retail sales and showroom space. Yeah, I think it, yeah, it's about 70, 25% of the total floor area is, uh, is finished. Yep. Any questions or? Mm -mm. Um, do you want me to continue on to the next um, appeal, the uh, Riverview, Riverview Healthcare? No, let's just continue. No. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what to do with this because I don't know how to figure in the retail space. I, I don't know what to. And if I'm missing something, tell me. I just I I can't. wrap my head around what that 25% supposed to be valued at. Is the comps or industrial off? I did have the uh, commercial specialist uh, at the Reval company look at that appeal when it, when it came to me. And he suggested that we deny that appeal. He said that the comps that they used, no offense, <laughs> um, their space is really nice. It's a very nice building. It's, he felt worth the value that they put upon it for 2020. You said Joe? I'm sorry? Uh, I was calling uh, Lisa and Joe, yeah. having more input. I'm just, um... <clears throat> thinking no change I, I'm gonna I'm seconding that I mean he were they were higher in a year past they were it looks like they had a decrease back in 18 am I is that correct in 18 like 17 they were at 3 mil and then at 18 they went to 2.8 and then to 2020 it brought it back to where it was in years past. They were at three, eighteen, three twenty eight. Right. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, yeah. At three point six and thirteen. My motion's to stay as is. Yeah, so Joe. Joe, you you made a motion to uh, keep it as is. Lisa, you seconded it. So, do you, if, is there any more discussion on this, or should we just go and uh, take a vote on it? Okay, let's take a vote. All in favor, say aye. Aye. All against. Okay, but the motion passes. No change. All right. Um, Next, we have review. Yeah. Review healthcare. You guys, uh, I guess I'll start with that one. Yeah. So this is review healthcare. Um, you know, it's a nursing home, and this, the, the property really has not been doing well over the past several years. Um, how I looked at this one as you know the primary method evaluation for all like nursing home senior living facilities would be the income approach. So I did a separate valuation, um, one, two separate valuations, one based on the actual 2019 income and expenses, and then another based on the actual 
2018 income expenses. The value that I came out with for the 2019s was five, about $5.7 million. Uh, the value that the numbers came out to, use, again, using the actual INEs for 2018 was about $4 million. Uh, the current assessed market value is $8,446,500. Um, now, do I think the, the value is $5.7 million or $4.4 million, 4 million as the just the raw numbers would indicate. I, I don't think so. I think it's higher than that. I think it's. I think it is somewhere in between those numbers and the current assessment. Um, Excuse me. You're saying it's between seven million six and uh, eight million four. Is that what you're so saying? no, no. Sorry. Um, what I'm saying is when I put the 2018 income expenses into um, an income approach capping it at 10%, the, the value came out to $4 million. I don't think it's that, I don't think the value of the property is that low. I did the same thing with the 2019 income expenses and the value came out to $5.7 million. I don't think the value of the property should be that low either. Um, T talking about Riverview. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They had um, an increase of 1%. That's an annual appeal. It is. <laughs> You come back every year. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I do have a couple more um, points I'd like to get to. The The property was appraised in 2014 for $7.6 million. At the time of the appraisal, the NOI was $1.97 million, which is much better than the property is currently doing. And again, these properties are primarily valued based on the income approach. So if the value back then was, the appraised value back then was $7.6 million, the NOI is currently lower than the NOI was back then. You know, I, so basically my requested value is $7.6 million, uh, which, which is higher than the numbers came out to from my, what, I, what came out to my 2018 valuation and my 2019 valuation. I also looked around at sales. I know sales would be more of a secondary um, valuation method with senior living properties, but uh, 239 Legris Ave in West Warwick, about three and a half miles from the subject, subject property, sold in 2018 for $31 a bed. Um, and that's, uh, you know, just kind of compare this to subject property. The subject's on at $44 a bed. And um, at the time of the sale, the, it was operating at 94% occupancy. So it's not like it was a distressed sale or anything like that. So again, um, you know, I think it's probably worth around what it was in 2014 when the property was performing better than it currently is. Uh, so that's how I got to my $7.6 million number. And Carrie, you, you said they rose 1%? 1%. One percent. One percent. Black position on this is the same as the last one. Which was, you wanted this to uh, keep it as is, right, Joe? That's my position. Okay. Just want to uh, make sure everyone knew that. I kind of feel the same as Joe because uh, for the past three years, uh, 2018 was uh, 8 million three, uh, 2019, 8 million three. And this year, uh, like you said, Kerry went up 1%, 8.4. 8, uh, uh, I go along with Joe. Now, uh, does anyone want, before we have a discussion, does anyone want to make a motion on this? And then we'll have a discussion, or a discussion if needed. I'll make that a motion. We have a second. I'll second it. Okay, do we have any more discussion on this? Do we need to have say anything else on it? Speak up. As I said, Karen, do you have any info as to how they 
how it's been assessed, what, what was used to assess this at the 8.4? What basis the town has in this number? They, they do their own uh, expense, income, and, and exp income approach on it, I think. I also had the commercial um, guru there look at this appeal and he said he said that he thinks that that value is good and that i'm sorry nick but this this is what they do they will appeal every single time mm -hmm. did we did we in years past request a formal appraisal on this property joe they did well Not that I know of. a few years back, but uh, it's a pretty expensive process for them to go through on that. Add anything to the conversation? I know, know that you have uh, had something to do with uh, this property in the past. Oh. Chris? I, I, oh. I guess not. Who are you speaking to, please, John? I was speaking to Chris, Chris oh, Anderson. What's that? No, I was asking if you wanted to uh, give us any input. I know that you had something to do with this property in the past. Would you rather just stay mute on that? I don't have, really have anything to do with this property. I know the property. Um, I'm, I'm torn because I... I they got some long winded appeals. I'm impressed that there was actually a sale of a similar building that you could actually come up with a, a price per bed on. Like I was impressed by that number. It doesn't really convince me that it's the value of the building though, because I don't know enough about the business or how things are run. I, I don't, I love sales. I love comp sales and you actually have one that was close, but I don't know if that really answers the question. Um, I don't, I really, I, I didn't know being new to the board that this comes up every year. And if this has been denied year after year after year and the same number, the only 1% that I, that I would go with precedent because I don't have enough to, to even suggest an argument against it, frankly. In light of that information, I, I, would, I would go along with the fact that this seems to be correct. Um, I, I don't, I don't, I don't have anything to say. <laughs> Let's go this. Actually, I don't think that they bring it up every year, but they bring it up quite often. Maybe every every bell year, probably. But uh, with with going with the motion and the second, uh, the keep uh, the property uh, as is, no change. Uh, I want to take a vote at this point. And all in favor of keeping the property as is, no change. All say aye. 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 Anyone who's opposed say nay. Okay, pass, no change. Nick, thank you so much for your time. Thanks. Hey Chris, I'm sorry, I thought, I remember uh, the, the meeting that you were at when we were outside the, uh, the office there. I thought that you were there because we, that night we had a uh, a meeting on the nursing home, and I, I guess I got you confused and thought that you were one of the, uh, the lawyers on behalf of the, uh, the nursing home there. Oh, if I had been, I would have recused myself on this. Um, well, that's why I, I even give yeah. it, you want to stay mute on it, you could, but. No. Yeah. I have a history here. I don't know how complete it is, mm. but in my records, it shows 2008, 2011, 2012, 2014, 2017, 2019 appeals. Yeah, like I said, not every year, but almost every other year. Yeah, and when I spoke with, now we're all just uh, meetings over. We should probably do that. All right, talk. Right. Uh, the last two, no show. Harley Cliff? Right. No show, no change. That's right. And unless they call, did they call? I got, I have, I have no phone call. I'll check my email. Well, if they haven't contacted us, then no change. No email. No okay. phone call. Okay, no change. No message. 
Okay. And that's on two properties, so. Right. 719 Tyogue and 705 Tyogue. Mm -hmm. And how do we not notice them about the meeting? I'm sorry? How do we notice them about this meeting? I called to get a um, email address and told them it would be a Zoom meeting and then they were invited by email today for the Zoom meeting. It's also on the Secretary of State website as a Zoom meeting. Okay, I... Fine, just curious. It, it's a new world, this whole Zoom thing. And it, is. it is, it is. It's new in many ways for me. <laughs> Terry, they were notified that there was gonna be a meeting tonight before tonight. Right? Yes, I spoke to Mr. Widman, who was their um, representative. Appraiser. I'm sorry? Their appraiser? Yeah. Yep. I'm a little surprised he didn't show up. I'm just, I, I don't know. if. Well, I mean, maybe we can make concessions if they contact me and say, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, that's up to you guys. But we could end the meeting before we if talk about that. I can say, oh, 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 I mean, do we hear it? That'll be up to you. I think we should hear it. Should we end the meeting? Like the, but these have been seconded and all? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I think if they want to come back and, and ask us to hear it, we can vote on it and, and reopen it. I agree yeah. with you. I, yeah, I wouldn't be opposed. Right. Not that I know. I so agree with you. What are we doing now? What's going on? Simply say, I, I believe, and, I, and we can vote on this. I, we can make a motion to deny them, vote on it, and that's it. My own feeling is, if they come back two days from now and say we're, so, we're oh, we screwed up, we should we should have been whatever, we can always vote to hear them. Can we put it on old business on the next meeting? Well, yeah, if they've, they've got a good reason why they couldn't make it here tonight and why they couldn't contact us, then then yeah. Yeah, I think we just hear their argument if they it do. didn't just show up, then no, you know, no so change. are we going to give no them change. a cutoff if I hear from them? No, no, no. Personally, I say you vote on this, be done with this, denied, and put the burden on them to convince us to rehear it. Kind of feel a little twisted though that it, it became their appraiser's job to notify them about this the, meeting. The appraiser is going to show up just like Nick did. That's what they do. Thank you, Mom. They, um, did they fill out that little paperwork authorizing him to speak on their behalf? Yes. Because that's. Yes, they did. I don't know. If they come back, I'd hear them. But... <clears throat> Well, if they come back with a good excuse. Oh, fair enough. So did we vote on this one? Did we motion and vote to deny this formally? Terry, I have a, a question for you. Can we, okay. can, when, when, we, when we vote to deny it based on the reasoning that, that Joe put forth, because that, that's, that's been our creed, no show, no change, mm -hmm. can we also go give them the opportunity of explaining it because your representative did not show on your behalf, so therefore, we were forced to deny your, your appeal and, and then give and let them know? Um, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to know that they were denied. If right. that's how you would want me to word it, I can do that. I would like to see it done like that because I... I, I think she's, you froze up, Lisa, but I, I think that she's been through this before, um, Miss Marley Clift. And, um, mm -hmm. but I can, I certainly can, but I just need to be straight on, are you denying because they no showed? Can, can I make a motion that we deny for failure to appear? Yes. Second that and vote on it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Say, that. say that again. I, I didn't understand what you said. I'm making a motion that we deny the appeals for failure to appear. Yes, because that's what we do. Okay, and you seconded it, Lisa? Yeah. Lisa, you seconded it? Oh, I totally second it. Yeah, I agree with this one. Do you, you want to take okay. a vote? Good. Any more discussion? Okay, all in favor, say aye. 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 Does everybody said aye? Passed. Okay.
So Lisa, you would like that, me to that, include- that, This is done. Now my suggestion would be if they come to you, Karen, and say, oh, well, we screwed up, you can always put them on, they can plead their case, and we can move to reopen it and hear them. I don't think there's anything that says that I can't. So I, I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. But otherwise, but. But I wouldn't know. I, 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 I so I disagree with Lisa. I wouldn't advertise that. I would just tell them you're denied. If they choose to come and say, oh, we made a mistake, can we please be heard? I think that when Ms. Marley Clift gets her letter that she was denied, she's going to contact her appraiser and say what happened. Yeah, because he's on retainer to be on this meeting. That's why I'm surprised not here because he gets paid. So right. <laughs> I'm shocked he's not here. And I feel bad for her that, you know what, uh, she, you know, she's paying someone thinking that they're doing their fiduciary and they're not. This is another annual appeal every year. She's got a dead building though there right now. Well, but they, that, that lease was paid through June. Of? 2020. So next time she's going to really have a, I mean, if oh. things didn't change, I'm sorry, what? I said, I have issues with their arguments about the valuation, but that's another, that's another situation. Well, it's been, it's been empty for a while, as you know, but they, they did have the lease paid through June because I, that is one question that I asked. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. So I am just going to deny and not put in language or what would you have me do? I would just deny it, but I'm not wed to that notion. I, I you know, we, we don't, we don't have to deny. We can just have, have Carrie Unis call up and say, Hey, what happened? If, if they, if they give a good reason, like, but you already voted to deny. Right. And that's been our creed. No show, no, no, no change. But when you have somebody who's supposed to be here on your behalf and they don't, you know, do you feel as, I mean, I, I feel as though her, he's getting paid. He should have been here and she's, somebody needs to tell her, this is why you got denied because the person who you hired did not show. Well, I think that's the reason we gave for failure to appear. I mean, she's going to figure out that the reason she failure, got denied. Okay. Yeah. As long as there's some type of language like that, 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 you know. Okay. So failure to appear. And then she'll figure it out. Yeah, so the burden's on them to, to figure out what's Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. That is not a problem. I can do that. Okay. All right. Karen, I apologize. I didn't realize that throwing a number reduction out was going to be a problem for you. Um, so I will not do that in the future. I appreciate I it. I appreciate it. It's, it's very difficult to ha I've, I've come across um, uh, many actually properties that had overrides from board um, hearings and and I and I understand hey, you throw out a number like um, in specifically today uh, Mr. Sosha on Barb's Hill Road. Mm -hmm appealed a couple of years ago, I guess. And you, there was just a number thrown out there. So in my system, I don't have a land value. I don't have a building value. I have an override of 440,000 because that's what the board said. And I really, really don't want to do it that way. I, so I would- If we're going to change a number, what do we do? Do we ask you for- like, We say, you know, maybe so much percentage should be taken off of the building, so much percentage off the house. Okay. Not a money number, a percentage number okay. is much easier for me to work with. Then I can put it in the right place. Easy enough. Thanks. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. I don't like that override thing. I know some assessors do it. I don't want to be one of them. Mm -hmm. No, you want a formula of how the new number is derived from. Yeah, right. I want to know where it was adjusted and why. Mm -hmm. Not just, that's the number. So I really appreciate your asking. 
On a different topic, I have a real problem with the way this town handles some of its exemptions, particularly the elderly ones. <laughs> Me too. Real problem with how this town does some, some, some of that. But what is the problem? What is your problem? Well, I object to the town's position that you cannot freeze and unfreeze um, your um, yeah. right. No, go ahead. I'll you can honest. you can freeze and then unfreeze, but yeah, then you, you can't you freeze, freeze again. But just once, you can do it again. And you should be able to. There's nothing that says you can't do that. We have people on this. We, something's going to happen with this tax freeze. I think we've had people on this tax freeze for 20 years with no. There's no lien. There's no, not even a tiny bit of. Hey, when you sell it, or you you go somewhere else or die. Nothing. It's compounded with the whole situation with the building department, which will get straightened out once we get a new building official, um, where they don't, and, and I had to bite my tongue when Mr. Uh, Hartnett was talking. Um, they don't issue permits for remodels. And I, no, they, no, they I'm don't. sorry? They don't. They do not do COs for. Um, I need to know that and, to keep everything equitable. I have to know that. That is huge. So there's several things that need to change as far as I'm concerned. That's a big one. I, I have to know. On a non reval year, it's the only way we can have new value and keep things equitable. So. But I'm not the town council, so you'll have to bring your gripe about the <laughs> exemptions to the town council. I have one on the veterans. It's pitiful. It's it's like twenty dollars. It's it's, oh, yeah, it's forty. It's ridiculous. It's awful. Just me spewing. Okay, I'm done. Do we have any more business tonight? Let me see the agenda here. Or any announcements? Are there any more in the pipeline? Oh, yeah. Yep. Coming to us I'm still not even through mine yet. I'm sorry? They're coming to us that you're taking care of. Oh, I have more that I'm taking care of, and you've got more coming to you. You see? Not that bad, though, but these people have uh a while before their time is up well, i get there's no point in setting a date i guess you'll just pick a date in the future we can try if you like that'd be all right with me it's all right with you how many do we have oh well i'm thinking that right now Right now, I've got one, two, three, four, five. I think I've got two in there, six, seven. Yeah. Seven, but we don't have to do those all in one night. Um, because I'm still trying to get through the rest of my appeals. Plus, we could have Molly Clift again. You wish we could? No, I said, plus, we could have Molly Clift. We could. And the people that I've just uh, been dealing with and denying today have till January 21st to appeal to you. So there could be more. But right now, only about seven. So we're looking at maybe two more meetings? At least. I'd say at least. If you'd like to uh, try and pick a day. Let me get to this. Tuesdays are good. Tuesdays are good? Uh, you guys think uh, Tuesdays are, is a good for you? It, it, it is for me. Well, I'm going to say no, so do it Tuesday. We've always done Tuesday anyway. You want to go like the 19th or the 26th? 
four or five weeks. I'd say a 26th between the two of them, but. Lisa, you're on mute. I agree. 26? Mm -hmm. Tentative for now? Everybody can check their stuff? I'm good. I'm good. How about you, Mr. Spada? Good. All right. January 26, 530? 530 works for me. That, that Laurie, can you do 530? Right? I can just barely make it. I'll, I'll work it out. It's tight, but it's OK. You're I changing. made it. I'm not wed to this. I'm sorry, Chris? I'm not wed to this. I don't care if you change it. 545, they better? Oh, yeah, that's good. That's That works better for me. It's up to everybody else. But. Mm. Right. If we're showing up at 530, we'll, show, we'll be there at 545. Great. All right. Okay. 545. And that last um, week and the month is, I think, works good. I'm trying to remember, but I think I have the land trust does theirs on a Tuesday, on the third Tuesday of the month. So um, that would be the 19th is the third right Tuesday. so that's what i'm saying the 26 works good if you were considering changing that to the 19th that that's wouldn't work oh good 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 excellent we are january 26 at 5 45 p.m yes sir okay any other business anything else we need to talk about uh, we got to fill that vacant board of assessment review seat. Yeah, well, you guys, um, you put the uh, the ads out for it, and then the town council uh, approved. I guess they look over the uh, uh, the uh, applicants, and then they interview the applicants, and then they make their choice. Okay. Um, I didn't know if uh, any of you, uh, especially the realtors knew anybody that might be interested or let them know that it's out there district three right i am actually not sure which district she was from she's district three okay who's district one Chris, district one district on um, district two, district three would be uh uh miss lyons and then district four is uh, is that you joe no i'm four okay and then joe's five Okay. Okay. Well, we did that a little out of order because we discussed future board of assessment meetings before we did vacant <laughs> board of assessment review, but we hit everything. It all comes out in the end. Anybody have any announcements? I wish I could come up with something really witty, but it's just not happening. <laughs> That's okay. Joe, Joe Spade is up to bat right now. Go ahead, Joe. I make a motion we adjourn. <laughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.